Today, we're gonna to make a logo in Adobe Illustrator by recreating the Space Jam logo, the new Space Jam logo, Space Jam 2, Space Jam, a new legacy. Sometimes when recreating work, there's a lot to learn from it. So in this case, this logo is actually defined by two different typefaces. Decotura is the main one for the space and the jam. And then Republic Sans number two, which is the bolder version, is the tagline there at the bottom, a new legacy. So those two fonts are the basis of this logo, the movie title. So go out there, find those. You can Google for them really quick and then start this tutorial by utilizing those two fonts. Let's get in and recreate create the Space Jam logo. This right here is what we're gonna be making. It's the basic Space Jam logo with then also a little gradient background. Now I'm gonna copy this to a new project so that I can have it as a reference, but if you wanna get started, go ahead and click File, New, Start a New Document. We're gonna do 1080 by 1080, so it's gonna be square, and in RGB color mode. Hit Create, and we've got this new document all set up. Now I'm gonna go ahead and paste in what I had here as a reference so that we can get started. All right, now this, like I said before, is based on two fonts. The first font, Deco Tura. So if we press T for the type tool, we can click out here on our artboard and start typing. We're gonna type out space. And then we're going to go back to that selection tool and then over to our properties panel and switch the font to Deco Tura. From here, I've already figured it out for you. You're gonna to go to 315 points. That's about the right size for the space type at the top of this logo. And then I'm gonna also center it. So it's gonna to align to the center and we can actually align it to the artboard here. All of these in the properties panel on the right. If you don't see any of those panels that we use during this tutorial, uh, go ahead and go up to the window dropdown. Every panel is gonna be right here. All right, so we've got space. I'm gonna duplicate this down by holding Alt or Option and Shift and just dragging it down. We're gonna double click on everything until it's all selected and type in Jam. So we've got space, we've got Jam, and Jam I'm gonna make sure is not 315, but 450 points. That's an approximate size of these two uh, typefaces inside of the logo itself. So you might notice a couple things. When we look at the logo on the right, we look at our type on the left. The A is shared for starters. So the A is shared between space and jam. It's just dragged out and, and, and skewed a little bit. The J is totally different from the font right? They've recreated the J. We've got a different hook down here at the bottom. Then I would say one other minor detail is the S. And we'll get into that later, but the S is actually not the same size as the rest of the letters. Now, to start with here, that J is a little bit different. The A is dragged out. What you can learn from that is that you can utilize basic fonts in your logos, but then go in and alter them. And that's what we're going to look at in this tutorial here. So let's go ahead and get started with that J. I'm gonna zoom in pressing Z and then clicking and dragging just to zoom in here. And we need to break apart these letters. So if I press V for the selection tool and click on this, I've got all the letters selected. A Couple different ways, you can go up to type down to create outlines, that's Shift Command O or Shift Control O as a shortcut or there's a quick action button in your properties panel. We click that and it's outlined all of our letters here, but they're still grouped together. So we need to right click, go to ungroup, and now we can click on each of these letters individually. First thing I'll do is just delete the A. We're not gonna use that A, but we are gonna use this M and this J. Now, specifically, we're gonna look at the J right now. Let's go ahead and create a rectangle and start this rectangle in the straight section of the J. Don't start it on the curve somewhere in the straight section here, and we're gonna cover up the whole bottom of the J, just like that. Now we're gonna go back to our selection tool, select both the J and the rectangle, just by clicking and dragging, and then Shift M is that shape builder tool, one of the best tools in Illustrator. We can hold Option or Alt, click and drag through to delete these shapes. If you don't hold Option or Alt, you're gonna merge them together which will just create a big old block. So we need to hold Option, hold Alt, slice through there to delete those shapes. Now let's make this rectangle the size of 
our M. So we need to drag it up a little bit till it locks into place with those smart guides. Those smart guides are in the view drop down, down to smart guides just right there. Make sure they're turned on. They're nice and helpful. Then we're going to click the double ended arrow on the bottom and drag it down till it locks into the top and now the bottom of the M. Let's create three duplicates of this line and they're going to be locked in right next to each other. So hold option or alt to start duplicating and hold shift. We're gonna drag it till it locks in just like that. So it's locking into that left side of the first one. And then we're gonna let go and then do the same thing again, holding Alt or Option to duplicate and Shift to keep it in line. Smart Guide's helping us keep it in line too. Okay, so we've got three of them. Let's take this middle one and rotate it. Holding Shift is gonna lock it into 45 degree angles till we get to 90. And then we can bring this guy down to the bottom just by clicking and dragging, just like that. Double ended arrow, we're gonna bring the side in till it clicks into the side of this shape here and same with the left, just like that. So what we've done is we basically, we've kind of created a U, but it's all uniform. A couple things going on, the width between the end of the hook over here, the vertical section over here and the vertical section of the main part of the J are spaced out exactly the same by the same width of the J itself. And then this bottom here is the same thickness. So it's just the same thickness all the way around. What we can do is pull this down a little bit. And now we have that J shape just like that. And what I'm gonna do is click and drag to select all three pieces. We're gonna pull up our Pathfinder panel over here on the right. That's in properties again. And we're gonna click to unite or basically merge all those shapes together. So now we have one single J shape. Cool. Now if you look at the logo itself, it's got a little bit of a point here on the hook. And that kind of mimics what you see in the font, like on the E up here. So what we can do to get that point, if we zoom in again, Z is the shortcut key for that. And then back to V for the selection tool. This time I'm actually gonna use the direct selection tool. Shortcut key is A, it's the white arrow in your toolbar. I like to click and drag to grab my anchor points sometimes. So I'm gonna click and drag over just this single anchor point right here. And we can use our arrow keys to sort of bump this down a little bit, right? To create that shape, the little hook on the end of that J, just like that. The roundness on the bottom will do here in a little bit. We don't need to worry about that. Okay, now that we have the J done, let's go ahead and break apart the top letters for space and make that A larger. To do that, we are going to do the same thing we did before by hitting that Create Outlines button and then right-clicking and ungrouping. Now we can select each of these letters individually. I'm gonna bump this M out a little bit to give me some room to bring this A down, but basically, I like where the A's at at the top here, and we may adjust that here in a little bit, but I'm gonna pull it down while also holding Shift because I'm gonna keep it proportional to itself and we're gonna pull it down till it locks into the bottom of the M right there. Now what we wanna do is sort of position this in the center of the top letters. And I think that these letters are a little bit close. So I'm gonna grab the C and the E and using my arrow keys, just bumping them to the right a little bit, grabbing the S and the P and bumping them left a little bit, trying to keep all this spacing pretty similar. We can bump the S to the left just a touch. We can bump the E to the right just a little bit. The last thing we wanna do here is make sure they all sort of line up to the top of the A. To do that, we can select all the top elements here, right? We can select all the SP, the large A, and the CE just by clicking and dragging through. We can click on the A, and that's gonna be now our key object. We're aligning every other object to that object. And when we look at our alignment panel, there's one over here called Vertical Align Top. I'm gonna to click on that and it's gonna shift those letters up to line up to the top of the A. So just like that, we've got that all lined up nice. Now, one thing with the font here is the A has a little hitch out here to the side and we wanna get rid of that. So pressing Z just to zoom in so we can see it a little bit better. And then pressing P, that's the pin tool up here in the toolbar. And if we hover over these anchor points with the A selected, we can actually remove each of these anchor points just to remove that little section that sticks out of the A there to the left. And once we've done that, what we're gonna do is go back to the short uh, V for the selection tool and just drag this J in. It's gonna be right underneath the P a little bit here. And we're gonna drag this M out just a little bit. 
So it's maybe just before the edge of the E right there. Now, when I look at this compared to the logo over here, I think we have a little bit more spacing in the logo at the top, and that allows us to space out some of these letters at the bottom so they're not as closely compacted. So if we look at this, we can select the P and the S. We can bump them left a little bit, and then we can bump the S left a little bit. Same with the C and the E. Just bump them a little bit to the right, the E a little bit to the right. That allows us then to maybe space out these letters here at the bottom lining up the J just to the right of the bottom of the P and the M just to the left of the bottom of the E. Now when we look at this, we can actually grab the J and we can round these corners now. Now when I have this J selected, specifically with the direct selection tool, that's A for the shortcut key, I can see all these different points and I've got a few extra points, probably because of how we merged the shape together. So I can press P for the pen tool and I can actually delete out a couple of these anchor points because we really don't need them. And in fact, there's more on top of each other than we need. So we wanna merge those and make sure we don't have extra anchor points here because when we switch back to the direct selection tool, shortcut key A, we have the option to round off this corner over here. However, we don't have the option to round off the lower left-hand corner. And this kind of thing can happen when you're working with designs and you're merging things together. So I'm zooming in here and I probably have multiple anchor points here. So I'm gonna delete anchor points until, there we go, so Command or Control Z to undo. I've deleted out the extra anchor points in this corner until now it's just a single anchor point. So sometimes you get those extra anchor points in there and you've just gotta figure out how to delete them out and clean up your paths and your shapes so that you can utilize things like the corner widget to round off corners. So with that being said, I'm going to click on this lower right hand point, uh, lower right hand anchor point, hold shift, click on the lower left hand anchor point, And now we have those both selected. We can actually round off those corners. And how much do we round it off? That's a good question. Probably quite a bit, maybe somewhere around 45. You'll notice in the properties panel, I actually have an increment amount here. So I could do 45, maybe we'll do less. We can always come back and adjust that. One thing that I do see in the logo is we do see the roundness hitting the A over here. So you might notice there's a little bit of a triangular space right there. So we can bump this J to the left until we start to see that a little bit, just like that. And that also means we could probably bump the A to the right a little bit too, like so. And that kind of lines up the jam uh, with the top as well. So somewhere in there would work. Now the other thing that we see is the A comes down through the M, but that's not how the logo actually looks. In fact, the A stops. It doesn't go all the way through the M. The M is what creates the bottom point here. So to do that, we actually can select both the A and the M, go to that Shape Builder tool, Shift M for the shortcut key, and notice how it sees each of these different intersection points. We want to get rid of this one down here. So hold Option or Alt till that little icon turns to a minus and then click on that lower point, just like that. So now we've sliced that out and it doesn't exist anymore. So now this A comes down and ends just right there. Now the other piece that's different here is look at the difference between the negative space here in the A versus the actual logo. This is extended out. So we can use that direct selection tool, shortcut key is A, grab that anchor point, and just pull it up, holding shift. We're gonna pull it up till it's maybe just below the halfway point of these letters up here, somewhere in there. So now that extends out that negative space in the A. This is looking pretty good. I think we're pretty solid. One minor piece here that you might see in the logo on the right is the S is actually a little bit larger than the other letters. The reason for that is just to help with a little bit of the balance here. Notice how the J leaves a lot of empty space here to the left. So what we can do is just hold shift, click on the lower corner here where you see the double ended arrows and you have your selection tool selected and we can scale that up just a little bit. It sort of gives a little bit of a hint of filling in this white space over here. So that's it, now we just need to add the tagline here to the bottom. The tagline is where that secondary font comes in. So if we press T for the type tool and start typing out here, 
I'm going to switch my font to Republic Sans and we're going to type in a new legacy. Looks like we got the wrong Republic Sans, so we need the 02, not the 01. So it's a little bit more bold. And let's make this more like 100 just to, so we can see it. There we go. So we've got a new legacy down here. Now here's where something else comes in. Fonts, especially free fonts, are not always kerned with the proper letter spacing between every single pair of letters. So when we look at a new legacy here, notice how the G, the A, the C, they're way more spaced out than the rest of these. That means these pairings are not kerned properly. So let's go ahead and kern those. Sometimes you've got to do that with, with your fonts and your word choices, especially when you're looking at headlines, subtitles, um, and anything that's going to be like front facing, like a logo or something and not necessarily body copy because that would require too much kerning. So you might want to choose a different font for body copy, but in this case, we're going to use this font for the subtitle. So I'm going to click between the two letters, go over here to my character panel, and we've got this little space right here and it's basically called kerning. It's not popping up, but it's how you can kern your font. So we're going to drop this down. I'm holding shift to go in increments of 10 and pressing the down arrow key. And we're just going to tighten these letters up. So minus 90, let's do minus 100 there. I'm going to click between the A and the C and tighten up this space. We might even do the same thing. Minus 100, that might be too tight. We'll look at that here in a second. I'm going to do the E and the G as well just maybe minus 20, uh, and we'll bump these back up. I think uh, minus 90 might be a better, better spacing there. So we're just tightening that up a little bit. We could maybe do minus 10 between the C and the Y, just clicking between the letters and then adjusting that kerning there. Now, I like the way this looks. I'm gonna back out just a little bit. I think what I'll do here is duplicate this down just to keep the letters, right? So that's one thing that I do. I just will always be duplicating things just to keep the editable text to the side while you can then outline the other text and expand it. So with that in mind, we're gonna click on this subtitle, Shift, Command, or Control, O, that's creating outlines, or click the button in your properties panel. Line it up to the left-hand side here. If it's not lining up, we'll just do the right-hand side first. I'm gonna drag this in while holding Shift to keep it proportional. There we go. And we'll do the same thing here, holding Shift, just to line it up to the left side of the J, just like that. And we'll just tuck it in right underneath here, about the same spacing as between Space and Jam. And there you go, there you have it. Space Jam, a new legacy. Let's do the gradient background. And one thing, once I get this all set up, I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate it out, holding Option or Alt, and just creating this over here, uh, just a little reference point in there. We could always go back to it. In the meantime, I'm gonna take all of this and I'm actually gonna merge everything together to a compound shape. So in my Pathfinder options, clicking Unite and everything sort of merged together. With that, now it's super easy to go to my Appearance panel, go to Fill and switch it to White just like that. So if I drag this one out, now you see that I have Space Jam in white and we have the black version that's still a little bit editable with the shapes and stuff, but this one's all merged together. So we're gonna create a rectangle, the size of our artboard, just by going from one corner to the other, clicking and dragging. The fill right now is white, but I actually want it to be a gradient. So I'm gonna open up the gradient window, up in the window, down to gradient, and once we have the gradient open, we can just click on this gradient to add a gradient to it. I like it going from top to bottom. So instead of zero degrees, we're gonna do 90 degrees. So now it's top to bottom. Looks like the top color is the color here on the right. So I'm gonna double click on that and I'll actually just color pick this red over here. For some reason it did white, but I'll color pick again and it's grabbing the red now. So you can actually click this. Oh, it's because we just missed it. So we're gonna click in the red right here. So while you have a swatch selected, select the color picker, and then we can pick this color down here. Now, of course, you don't have the color picker at home, so if we look at this color, the RGB values 191, 35, 30. The purple RGB values 108, 49, 136. Now there's actually a pink in the middle. So if we add this as well and color pick that pink out of there from the middle, 
RGB value here, 184, 23, 121. So you can put those in if you want to create this same style of gradient. Grab the Space Jam logo, pull it in. It's behind, so we could right click, arrange, bring to front, and then go to the alignment panel, align to that artboard, middle, middle, and we've got exactly the Space Jam logo finally created in here. So I hope you guys learned a lot in this tutorial, just the fact that you can create a logo, create a cool movie title, a cool effect, just with using letters from fonts and manipulating them. That's the main point here. That's a lot of what lo good logos out there are. Not that this is an amazing logo or an amazing movie title, but it's current and some of you might be interested. I haven't seen it yet. I watched Space Jam when I was a kid. I don't know if this one's gonna be as good or not. Kind of nostalgia based, right? Based on the first one. All right, if you guys have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comments down below. I'm Spencer from Pixel and Bracket, and I'll see you guys next time.